Hi, everyone. My name is Joshua Craig, and I am the UI lead on the HealthZilla team for Project 3 alongside Ryan, Brendan, and Jingwen. Now, given the nature of this project, you will find that in terms of new fragments or other independent news, our UI changes are rather straightforward, with two new fragments being introduced. The first is the startup fragment, which simply serves to give a more professional entry into the app, showing the logo designed by Jingwen for around two seconds before redirecting the user to create their profile or to the main landing page of the app. This was added largely to give the application a more cohesive and thematic feel, which ultimately serves to give this utility app a face, so to speak. Outside of this, it has no additional behavior, but it can serve as a great way to incorporate something like a sign-in framework where this app developed further. The next uh, noteworthy UI addition is that of the step, step counter fragment, which was added as a new option within the bottom navigation menu. It was designed to satisfy the project requirements while also fitting in with the existing format of the application and more or less matches the sketch. At the top, you will see the name of the fragment in conjunction with the user's profile icon, which like in all other fragments may be used to take the user back to their profile at any time. Below that, you, you see that there is a copy of the weather module, exactly like what we have in the hikes fragment. This was done for additional convenience as the assumption with the hiking fragment still holds true for this one as well, which is that given the purpose of the fragment typically will involve going outside to some capacity, it would be convenient to have the weather right there for any user thinking of going out and logging their steps. Let's take a look at a demo of this fragment while I get into the meat of this module. Upon entering the module, the user will have two options to begin logging their steps. The first is to simply press the start and stop buttons. The second is to use a gesture. Simply shake your phone to the left and the step counter timer will start or stop. Once the timer has been started, moving the phone up or down, like when walking, will cause the step counter to, uh, for the current session to increment until the timer is stopped. At this point, the number uh, will be displayed below in the recent history section, which always displays the last three step sessions. Additionally, we see above that section, the user's step record is displayed, showing the highest number of steps recorded across all sessions. That's all there is to it. Hello, everybody. I'm Ryan Brooks, uh, the team lead for this section of the HealthZilla application. And before we get into the actual code structure, I'm going to do a brief demo of the application, showing off all of its features. So very quickly, we have a user profile here, but we want to make a new one. So let's go ahead and click the delete account button and just confirm that. And that will take us back to the title screen, which will reload our create profile. So for this, we are going to just enter some information and I'll skip ahead here. And one notable, notable thing is that when you actually start entering the country, it will put a drop down list of options. So you can see here that if I enter United, then it gets you United States of America, and we can enter that. So now we have our profile, and this is the profile screen, which allows us to review all of our currently entered information, delete the account if we so wish, but we just did that, so we won't do that again. Let's go to the edit profile. Here we can edit anything. We forgot to upload a profile photo, so we can go ahead and add that now. And as easy as that, you can see we have a profile photo. We can obviously alter anything else. Let's submit that for now. Let's go over to the hikes section where we can see both the weather and the hikes. These are hikes around Salt Lake City. And if we click on one, it will take us over to the actual hike on Google Maps. Yes, of course it does. And now that we're back, we can see that the weather, both the temperature and the condition is displayed up here, as well as the location, once again, just to reassure the user of what they've entered. Um, we can go ahead and head over to the step counter. A demo of the step counter was showed earlier in the presentation, and we're not going to go through it again here. Firstly, because it's, this is an emulator that doesn't have a step counter. And secondly, because you've already seen it, let's just know that that's there. And then um, we have the uh, fitness tracker where we can set our weight goals. So obviously we can set something like lose. Let's say we want to lose one pound per week. And we'll say we're, we're, we're moderately active. You can see it calculates our BMI, our BMR, and our daily calories for this information. And obviously we can change it to something else. Like let's say we want to lose four pounds per week. And that's going to warn us that this is not good for us. Daily calorie intake is less than the recommended minimum. And as well, attempting to lose or gain more than two pounds a week can be dangerous. One thing I wanted to show is that if we change our location here, we'll change it to something like in a different country, we can see a different list of hikes and that will automatically update. So let's go here. So as you can see, I've set it to Kyoto, Japan. So if we go over here back to the hikes, you can see that both the weather and the hikes update very quickly there. One last thing that I want to show is if we close the application very quickly and then we reload it, all of our information is still here. And so it saves our information between sessions. Obviously, we can delete our account once again.
So moving on, I'm going to quickly discuss the structure of our application. As a reminder, Healthzilla is an application written in Kotlin using Jetpack that makes use of fragments to represent its modules, which are all hosted in a singular main activity. The data integral to the operation of these fragments lives in instances of data classes that are held inside the repository. The repository, through DAOs, connects to a database to load and save this data between sessions. Furthermore, the view model is the structure that connects the repository and the data to the fragments themselves. The methods in the view model make use of the methods in the repository to edit, save, store, etc. this data, and these methods are available to the fragments. Additionally, the view model holds some lightweight data that does not need to be stored for later use. This is mostly used within the step counter module. Now going into a bit more detail, the list of fragments that we have is the step fragment for step counting, the starting fragment, which loads upon initializing the app, the edit profile fragment, which is for editing our, the user profile, the view profile fragment, which is reviewing the data, the calorie calculator fragment, which is for counting calories, and the hikes fragment, which is for viewing weather and hikes. The data that is used in these fragments, as I mentioned earlier, is stored in instances of data classes. There are three data classes in total that are used by an application. Two of these are connected to internet APIs, them being the places data and weather data, and consequently are managed by helper methods from API utils. The data class user profile is unique in that it was created for this application to store information about individual users and their step information. The DAOs, the user DAO and the weather DAO, that manage the storage of the data in these instances into the database use a weather table and the user profile itself to define the structure of the tables in the room database. One final thing to discuss is that the main activity is what manages our AWS connection and the backup. Firstly, we need to mention something about the DAOs. Both the user DAO and the weather DAO implement a checkpoint method that finalizes the data in the database. This allows us to successfully upload that data to the Amazon web server without threat from an MD5 error caused by the data being edited while it's being uploaded. Moving back to the main activity, data is backed up to AWS periodically. Specifically, we make sure to do this in its own coroutine to minimize the interference of this with the actual application itself. The specific information that is backed up in this upload is all of the information stored in our user database, which contains both our user profile table and our weather table. So this includes all the information about the user, all the information about the step counter, and all the information about the weather that was last loaded. So that just about summarizes the structure of our application. Now we'll be going into details on testing for this section of the project. Hello, I'm Jingwen. I'm responsible for the testing part. Uh, I use unit testing and manual testing for project three. So firstly, let's talk about the major bugs found in the code. Uh, the first bug found in the code is that when changing location to an invalid city name, both the hike and step control UI still displays old information from previous valid input. As the picture shows, uh, the first one is a good example, showing Hawaii's weather and user's data. However, uh, when I change the city name to Fix City, which does not exist uh, in this country, the weather data and the hike data are still from Hawaii. Uh, the second bug is that the warning message will, will not always pop up correctly. The alert window will only appear right after the user changes the invalid input to a normal one, although the hike information is normally displayed in the hike UI. Another bug situation is that the same alert will pop more than once, so the user probably needs to press OK several times to access the app. Uh, for the testing method, to test uh, step counter and database, I used both manual test and unit test. Since the step counter is hardware dependent and it cannot be simulated in Android Studio, I connected my Android phone to the app and tested the counter result. Uh, also, there are some unit test case testing for the algorithm and database processing. Uh, for the AWS deploy part, uh, most of the areas were fixed during the development programming, and in the end, uh, we downloaded all the DB files and checked them to make sure everything works well. So this is all for testing part. 
and thank you so much for watching our presentation.